morning and welcome to Call for Today Prophetic Ministry with Bishop Dello. And uh, I want to welcome you this Sunday morning on Facebook Live as well as through conference call. Uh, I wanted to uh, take a few minutes to share some things with you dealing with our uh, spiritual growth and, and uh, one of the one of the, uh, the biggest issues in the lacking in the church today is has to do with spiritual maturity and uh, uh, so many people in church who are not doing the very basics uh, that we're commanded to do throughout the New Testament scriptures in developing our spiritual growth and growing up uh, into the place where we are uh, every one of us joints and ligaments that are that are helping to build up the church in love and growing up into our head Jesus Christ and so uh, I wanted to share a couple of particular scriptures uh, to help us in this area and uh, hopefully to uh, uh, to uh, convict you and, and to uh, motivate you to uh, get serious. Because again, uh, I'm telling you, there is an urgency in the spirit. Uh, it's not just me. I'm hearing it all over the body of Christ. Those that are really seeking God, those that uh, a lot of these prophetic voices are saying the same thing. Uh, we are seeing the signs of the times. Things are winding down, and we have got to get serious. We have got to get into the condition that Jesus Christ has called us to be. Because I'm telling you, he's coming back for a church. He's coming. It's guaranteed. It, it, it's written in the Word. He has promised to do it. Uh, the Father has, has said it's going to be, and that it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. But we have to understand Who's he coming back for? He's coming back for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she should be holy and without blemish. And that's what he's coming back, nothing less. He's not coming back to make you uh, into that condition. He's coming back because you're in that condition. Amen? And, and we need to understand that. So let's just take a moment. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I just thank you for everything you've given to us. I thank you for this great salvation. I thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. I thank you for your abundant grace that you poured upon us, Lord. I thank you for your goodness in the land of the living and all of your wonderful works. And Father God, as we as we, as we look at the things going on, we, we're seeing prophecy being fulfilled. We're seeing exactly what you have prophesied would be the condition of your church in these last days. We're seeing it right before our eyes. And, and Lord, it's not a, a good picture uh, because you said that uh, there would be a great falling away. There could be a lot of, of uh, sin in the church, a lot of deception in the church, and all of these things. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We pray, Father God, that you would move mightily in this hour to prepare your church, to raise up that glorious church, Father God, to, to bring us into the place that you, you, that you will be, uh, be, be pleased uh, when you come and see your people, Father God, walking in the truth, living in the truth, in carrying out your will and purpose. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you open up the word to our understanding, convict us, draw us, uh, work mightily in us, anoint the word to work effectively in us, and all that hear will receive and believe and be changed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, uh, I say all this to say this because, because uh, again, uh, we are lacking real spiritual maturity in the church today. And, and again, Jesus prophesied this. Uh, just about every writer of the New Testament prophesied about the last day's church being a time of lawlessness, a time of, of uh, falsity, deception, false prophets, false teachers, uh, uh, people falling away, and, and uh, just, just a church that is not living and walking into the standard uh, that uh, this salvation should produce. And this is a dangerous time uh, for people to be in a place of spiritual immaturity, especially if you've been uh, professing Christ, you've been in the church, you, you, uh, you, you claim to be, be saved and born again for, for years, you know, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. If you are still in a condition of spiritual immaturity, you're in a dangerous place because Paul warns us about this. And, and, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, Paul, Paul warns us about uh, uh, the, the, that God gave us these gifts to the church. He gave us the fivefold ministry for the purpose of the perfecting of the saints, for the 
for the equipping of the, of the saints for the work of the ministry uh, in order for the, 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 the edifying of the body of Christ. But I want you to know what, he, what, what Paul speaks in this verse uh, that is so key and that we have got to embrace and do something about. He says that we should no longer be children. In other words, Paul is saying if we're, if we're Christians, we should be growing up. We should be growing into spiritual maturity. We should be uh, uh, in the word and doing the things God has called us to do to become spiritually mature so that we're doing our part as, as ministers and priests of, of God. So Paul says uh, that we no longer be children. And look at the danger he tells us when, when, about this condition. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. By, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. In other words, Paul's saying, if we're not spiritually mature, if we don't have discernment, this is exactly what's going to happen. These false prophets, false teachers are going to draw us away uh, with their deceptions. And, and again, uh, you have to understand, these people are being manipulated and used by demonic forces. The prince of the power of the air is using them to do his will, to get to you, to get you out of the faith, to get you into sin, to, to as Jude talks about, they, they get into the church to do what? To, to uh, uh, change the grace of God into lasciviousness, to basically give people license to do as they please and uh, live as they want without any consequences. And, and there's great warnings in uh, throughout the New Testament over and over and over again. And the warning is, don't be deceived. Well, how do you not be deceived? You have to grow up. You have to do the things that God has called us to do. You have to get in the word and not just hear the word, not just read the word, not just listen to the word, but to do what the word says do. Amen. You've got to do what the word says. Like Paul, like uh, James says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Why? Because in these last days, the enemy is doing everything he can to destroy the church, to come after anybody who obeys the commandments of God or has a testimony of Jesus Christ. He knows his time is short, and uh, he is coming after uh, uh, weak, uh, immature Christians that don't have the discernment, that are easily swayed, that, that, that again, like Paul says, they're, they're tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, everything that comes along, they're jumping on the bandwagon because they're not spiritually mature. They're not growing up in their faith. They're not growing up into their head, Jesus Christ, and becoming mature to discern these things that come down the pike, to discern the, the spirits behind things. And so, uh, we, we you know, Paul talked about in Timothy, there, there, there are those who get into the church that do what? That, that tickle the, the, the ears of the hearer. To, to, to give them these things that sound good and aren't that wonderful and isn't that great, man? We should, and, and their, their lies, their deceptions, their, their doctrines of demons, they're not scriptural, okay? But again, he, he warned us that all of these things would take place and they're taking place. That's why there is a great falling away in these last days because people are being deceived by these false prophets. So Paul says, that, that we're we're not to be children. We need to grow up, okay? And like he just said, we are we are to grow up to that perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We are to come into spiritual maturity, whereby we walk like Jesus. We we understand who we are in Christ. We we have knowledge of who God is, and we live a life unto Him to glorify Him. So Paul says, uh, "Don't be tossed to and fro." And the way he says, "By the trickery of men." By the trickery of men. That's how they deceive you. They, they know how to manipulate. They know how to, to get to you. They know, they know how to push the buttons. They know uh, how to use, because you have to understand, uh, in, in, in immaturity, uh, Paul talks about in, in Hebrews, uh, one of the, per, the, the reasons of spiritual maturity is to discern between the righteous and the unrighteous, between the clean and the unclean, to be able to understand According to the word of God, what is right and what is wrong in the eyes of God? Well, if you're not spiritually mature, these enemies come in and uh, work through these men that work trickery, okay? And he says, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. 
that description, the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, is, a, is, a, is literally the scripture of Satan himself. That's who he is. He, he works craftiness. He works deceitful plotting. That's what he does. He's the master of deceit. And he uses these people to carry out his works. And so, so people, if you're not spiritually mature, if you don't have the discernment, if you're not growing up in, 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 in the word of God and, and know the truth and know the word of God, you're going to be deceived. And so we're warned about that. People, Paul again says, grow up. He says, speaking the truth in love, that we may what? That we may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. We are to grow up in all things into him who is, is the head, Christ. Meaning that we grow up in spiritual maturity to be like Christ, to, to have the image of Christ formed in us. That we, again, walk like Christ, live like Christ, talk like Christ. We, we, we know him. We abide in him. We, we, we obey him. We do the things he's called us to do. Because as long as we're not in that abiding place of Christ, as long as we're not growing up in our walk with Christ, we are going to be subject to the wiles of the devil. We're going to be subject to these deceptions. And again, the Bible tells us, he warns us over and over again, you will be deceived. And, and uh, through that deception, you're going to be uh, pulled away. And basically what will happen is you end up in apostasy. You're going to end up in apostasy. Okay, So he tells us, we need to grow up. Why? That uh, that uh, the whole body, every single one of us, join and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effect of working by which every part does its share, cause growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. In other words, every Christian is to grow up in their faith, grow into spiritual maturity, and then to, to become a a uh, part of the body of Christ to be knit together with all the people in the church of God that we each do our part that God has called each one of us to that we do our part okay as the ministers of God as the priests of God we do our part to fulfill our purpose the calling that God has given us using the gifts that God has given us so that what the whole body that the whole body can be built up in love and, and notice as each one of us does our part the church can operate in completeness. It can operate in fullness and be effectual in doing the work of the gospel, which is to what? Get people in the church of Christ. Get, get people saved and make disciples of all people. Now, I said all that to say this. I want to share a particular scripture in Colossians chapter 1. And uh, this is Colossians chapter 1, verses uh, 9 through 12. 9 through 12. Colossians 1, 9 through 12, I encourage you to write that down. Do what I do. Write out that, that passage. Write it down. Write it on a three-by-card piece of paper something. Write it down. Memorize it. Get it inside of you. Uh, because this is one of the, uh, one of the most profound scriptures uh, in the New Testament when it comes to spiritual growth and uh, uh, ways that we need to pray for ourselves, for our families, for our children, for for our uh, uh, people we know, for for for, the, for people in the church, this is one of the most profound and powerful passages of scriptures that given to, given to us, uh, and, and it's actually a prayer of Paul for the church, for Christians, uh, again, that they would grow up spiritually, that they would grow into spiritual maturity. Paul has. Uh, numbers of these prayers throughout the New Testament in his letters to the church praying for the spiritual growth because that was Paul's whole thing. Paul's whole thing was not to make, you know, get somebody to say a prayer and tell them they're saved and converted and then leave them in this condition where nothing's changed. Paul's ministry was all about the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. Paul's ministry was to produce uh, disciples who make disciples, to produce mature spiritual individuals that carry on the work of the gospel that that from generation to generation to generation that continue the church that continue the work of the church that continue uh, uh, the, the whole process of, of true salvation and maturity whereby the church can propagate itself as every generation as men and women of God full of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God walking in the fear of the Lord doing the things of God so that it would continue forever. Amen. 
And it, that requires all of us to come into that because, again, if you don't grow up, if you stay a babe, you are going to be subject to deception and, and, and reality. Uh, you're going to be drawn away into things that are going to move you away from God, be a part of uh, uh, that falling away, or even be a part of, of, of a condition where you're not going to make it to the kingdom of God. That's the, that's the reality. That's the bottom line of it. If we're not obeying God, if we're not doing the things that God called us to do, something's wrong. Something's not right with our relationship. Amen. Like Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and then don't do what I say do? In other words, he was saying, I'm not really your Lord if you don't listen to me. So if we're not listening to God and doing what he says, and one of the things he tells us to do is grow up, grow up in Christ, get in the word, get in the spirit and grow up, get your personal devotion, get in a prayer life, get in the word, do the things that God has called us to do. And, and as you grow, as you study the word, as you look into the word, that you do what the word says. Amen, every one of us. So let me let me show you this scripture and uh, this passage in Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 12. Let me read it through one time, and then I want to break it down for you a little bit because this thing is so rich uh, for spiritual growth. And remember, the Bible tells us if we, if, if, if we ask anything, if we ask anything according to the will of God, he will do it. Amen. He'll do it. Now, the word of God is the will of God. So if you want to ask God something according to his perfect will, all you got to do is pray the word of God and you're praying the perfect will of God. Amen. So by praying these things, uh, we have assurance that God's going to move on behalf of our prayers to bring it about in our own lives. Again, our, our family's life, our, our wife, our husband, our children, our, our neighbors, our friends, you know, Praying for people in the church, praying for the body of Christ. We're told to pray for all the saints, continually pray for all the saints, okay? We're called to do that. Okay? But how do you know that you're supposed to do that if you're not in the Word? Amen. So let me read through this. He says, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Now let's look at this. Let's, let's break this down a little bit because again, this right here is, is so key that we need to be praying this all the time for ourselves and for others because this contains uh, the, the, the richness of God's will and purpose for every single Christian, for every single one of us, every one of his children. If you're a born again child of God, this prayer is for you. You should be walking in these things. Everything, everything that Paul is praying here is, is scriptural. It's the perfect will of God. It's God's desire, his purpose, his plan for every single one of us. And it's the fulfillment of much of what God has called us to do and to be. And, and so this is, this, is, this is so rich and so important and so vital to spiritual growth. That's why Paul prays these prayers. That's why he gives them to us. That's why they're in the word. Amen. That's why he gave them in his letters. And these letters were passed among all the churches. He sent them, you know, if he sent his letter to Colossae, he expected to go to Ephesus and, and uh, Smyrna. You know, they were to go from church to church. That's what they did. They passed these around. That's why we have the Bible today, because these things were passed around. They were copied. They were, they, they, they were kept and preserved so that we would have the word of God today. Amen. So, so let's go through this. Let's look what he says, okay? And number one, uh, notice what Paul says, his, his own attitude. And uh, again, he, he calls every one of us to this, this same thing where Paul says, uh, I do not cease to pray for you. I don't cease to pray for you. I never stop praying for you. Paul lived a life of true love for one another. When Jesus says, that, this is how you know that you're my disciple, that you, you love one, one another. Paul demonstrated that love in, in not just his 
his preaching of the gospel, not just ministering to people, but he prayed. He had a burden for the church. He had a burden for all the people in the church of God, and he prayed for them. That's why you look at the, the letters that Paul writes at the end of almost every letter that Paul writes. He has a list of names of people in the church that he, he lifted up, that he, he recognized. And, and uh, uh, he, he again, he had this personal concern for everybody he met in the church. And as he tells us in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints we are commanded we are called to pray for all the saints so paul is giving us that's what paul says is able to boldly tell us uh, follow me as i follow christ imitate me as i imitate christ why because paul imitated christ fall paul followed the ways of christ he put into action the things that he preached the things that jesus taught us paul followed the commandments. He did the word of God. And part of that word was to demonstrate his love for the brethren, for, for each other. How Paul prayed constantly, always for all the saints. He did it. You, you can find this over and over and over again in his letter, how Paul talked about praying for them and, and lifting them up and, and being concerned and being burdened for them and, and uh, wanting to see them grow up, wanting to, wanting to help them in whatever way he could uh, to 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 help develop them spiritually and help them become the people and the church that God wanted to be. And so Paul recognized the importance and power of prayer. And so he gives us these prayers. He wrote them out for us so that we can we can use these same tools ourselves to help again in our own spiritual growth and the growth of others that we can imitate Paul and imitate Christ and follow Christ by doing the same things, by praying for one another praying for our families, praying for, for others in the church, praying for all the saints, amen? So that's what we do. Now, now, now let's look at what Paul prayed, okay? Paul prayed that they would be filled, that every one of us would be filled with the knowledge of God's will, with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Well, what are we called to do? We are called to do the will of God. We exist to fulfill the will of God. Well, you have to know what that will is. Amen. So Paul prays that we would all be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Amen. That we would know what his will is. And again, how do you know the will of God? You have to get in the word of God. This again, it all comes down to the, the word and the spirit. You have to be in the word of God. You have to abide in the word of God. You have to read the word of God, study the word of God. To, to, to know the will of God, amen? His will comes through the word of God and the Spirit opening that word to you to show you the will of God. And we have a general will throughout the New Testament given to us, but then God's Spirit will, will show us the specifics of how to apply that will to our own lives. That's why Paul says when he prays this, he says not only that you know the will of God, okay, that, that we have to know what it is, but he says, that we would know in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. In other words, we know how to apply that will to our life, how we personally and individually walk out that will as our part of our ministry and calling, how we fulfill it in our own lives, okay? So we have to have wisdom, okay, which comes from God, and understanding, which comes from God. And that's why you read the book of Proverbs. When you study the book of Proverbs, that's what it's all about. Getting us to understand that we can't live this life. We can't walk out this life of God. We can't we can't be the people that God has called us without three things. God's wisdom, God's understanding, and God's knowledge. We need to be filled with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge for everything we do. Because that's the way God operated. Everything God did, okay? Everything he produced in creation. And you can again find this in, in, in the, the Proverbs. Everything he did was by wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Amen. And so we're called to do the same thing. Everything we build in the kingdom of God, everything we produce in the kingdom of God, everything that, that God uses us to, to bring forth in the kingdom of God, whether it be a church, a ministry, or, or, or whatever it is that God has called us to do, okay, has to be done in divine wisdom, 
understanding and knowledge, okay? So that it's done not just, uh, uh, you know, in whatever way, but it's done to the excellence of God. It is done in the way that pleases God so that it can bear the fruits that God desires, fruits of righteousness, fruits of holiness, fruits that will glorify God, fruits that will remain, fruits that will uh, be pleasing in his sight. Amen. That's what it's called to do. So, so the first thing Paul prays for us is that we would have the knowledge of God's will and that we would have that knowledge with God's wisdom and spiritual understanding so that uh, we know how to carry out that will, how to walk it out, how to apply it to our lives so that uh, 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 we can fulfill God's will for our lives, okay? So we need to pray that for each other, pray that for ourselves, pray that for our wife, our husband, our children, okay? We need to pray that. Now, look what he says. What is the purpose of knowing the will of God and, and walking it out? He says that you may walk worthy of the Lord, that you may walk worthy of the Lord. In other words, God has called us with a purpose, amen? Jesus, in chapter uh, 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 John chapter 9, Jesus says, you you didn't uh uh you 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 didn't you didn't call me I called you okay we we don't come to Christ Christ comes to us because you know it, it, without without God's moving without God's moving us without God's drawing us without God revealing to us we will never see God okay so 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 Jesus says I have called you okay. And, and, and to do what? And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Okay? So Jesus calls us with divine purpose. He calls us to make fishers of men. So he calls us to serve and glorify God. He calls us with purpose, with destiny. We've been predestined for certain things, predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ, to carry on the will and purpose of God. He is prepared beforehand, before we ever existed. God already had pre planned purposes pre-planned works for each one of us to carry out in this life in order to fulfill God's calling upon our lives. Amen. Do you know what that is? Have you ever sought God to find out what has God prepared you to do? What, is, what, is, what, what works has God called you to fulfill in this life so that when you stand before him, he can say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Have you done that? Do you know the will of God? Have you have you gotten the word of God and, and studied to find out what the will of God is for your life? Have you prayed and asked God to, to, to show you and to and to 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 mold you and shape you into condition whereby you can fulfill his will and purpose and in divine wisdom and spiritual understanding and and, and uh, uh, to be done in the way that, that God needs it to be done? Okay, so so the purpose of this then is that we would walk worthy of the Lord. In other words, we're living a life that is worthy of who God is because he's God, because he's the most high. He's the, the savior, the creator, the healer, the deliverer. The, 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 he's everything to us. He's high. He's holy. He's righteous. He's perfect. Amen. To, to walk worthy of who God is. He's my God, my Lord, my Savior, my healer, my deliverer, my provider. He's my anointed. He's my life. He's my breath. So how do you live worthy of him? How do you, how do you, how do you live a life that is worthy of who God is? And, and not just of who God is, but of the God that has actually chosen us, a God that has called us a, by name, a God that has come to get us, to save us, to help us, to make us his own special people. How do we walk worthy of that? Well, exactly as Paul says, uh, by, 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 by coming into the, being filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's how we do it, to understand who God is, to understand his will, to understand what God has called us to do and to be. That's how we walk worthy of him. I like what uh, uh, what, what uh, David says in Psalms 116. He says, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? And in other words, David was acknowledging the greatness of his God, the, how wonderful he is, how 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 grateful, how how thankful he was for everything that God did for him. He says, uh, how, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? How can I live a life worthy of what, of who God is and what he has done for me? Okay? He says, I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. 
I will pay my vow to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. And in other words, David was saying, I recognize God for who he is. And I am so appreciative, so grateful for what God has done for me and, and who he is and being who he is, that he would actually recognize me. And, 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 you know, this this worm, this, 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 this sinful, uh, uh, you know, to be rejected. And yet God saw fit to call me by name, to, to bring me to himself, to, to clean me up, to change me, to save me, to make me to a new creation, to love me, and, and to bring me into his kingdom, to make me his own child. How do we walk worthy of that? You see, that's why we have to pray this, that we know the will of God. We, 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 we. We 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 we're filled with the knowledge of His will and, and, and wisdom and spiritual understanding, so that we can live a life. We can walk out our appreciation, our gratitude, our love, our devotion for who God is and everything that He has done for us. And then Paul goes on and says that that uh, uh, that we may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, fully pleasing Him. He exists to please God. We no longer live for ourselves. We live for the one who died for us. Amen. We're constrained by the love of Christ. Like Paul says, we're constrained by the love of Christ and no longer live for ourselves, but to live for the one who died for us. We follow the example of Christ. We live as Jesus will live. Jesus did nothing for himself. Everything he did was to please the Father. Everything he did was to fulfill the will and purpose of the Father. Jesus himself tells us, he says, I only speak what the Father tells me to speak. I only go where the Father tells me to go. I only do what I see the Father doing. He lived a life in total devotion and consecration to the will and purpose of the Father. He was sanctified. He was set apart for the will and purpose of God. To do what? To please him. To live a life worthy of his calling. To live a life of, 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 of uh, uh, living a life of worthiness to who God is. We are called to live the same way. We are called to have that same mind, that same attitude. To live a life that pleases God. How do we do that? Recognize that we've been bought with a price. We're not our own. We've been bought with a Christ. We've been bought with the very blood of Christ. That we're not our own. We belong to God. He bought and paid for us. We belong to him. And therefore, we exist for the single purpose to do what? As Paul tells in 1 Corinthians 6, to glorify God in our body and our spirit. To live a life of total consecration and devotion to God. That's what we're called to do. And that's why Paul prayed this prayer for every single saint of God. That's why we need to pray this prayer. That's why everybody in the body of Christ needs to be praying this prayer. Because it's the perfect will of God. Because it's what God desires of every one of us. It was God's plan and purpose for every child of God. That we live this way. That we walk in these things. Then he goes on. He says that you may walk worthy of the Lord. Fully pleasing him. Being fruitful in every good work. Being fruitful in every good work again. Jesus called us to bear fruit, to be fruitful. We, we, we are called. In fact, when Jesus gave the, the parable of the seed and the sower, what did he say? Only those that receive the word of God with understanding, okay, with understanding become the true sons and daughters of God, they're truly saved to do what? To bear fruit, a hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold, to bear fruit. We are called to bear fruit. We are called to multiply. We are called to bear fruit in our service to God. Every one of us, if we're not bearing fruit, we're in a very bad, a very, very tenuous situation. In fact, if, 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 we, if, if we believe the word of God, do you believe what Jesus says? Do you believe what, what Jesus uh, uh, tells us in, in his word? Do, do we believe what he says? Because in John chapter 15, those what Jesus says, I am the true vine. My father is a vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he, he says, he takes away. He takes it away. If you don't bear fruit, he says, he takes it away. Okay, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. He prunes it. Why? That it may bear. That it may bear more fruit. Okay. That it may bear more fruit. 
What does he say? A branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. Who He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. We should be bearing much fruit. Amen? That's what we're called to do. By this, my Father is glorified. By this, my Father is glorified. How? That you bear much fruit so that you will be my disciples. So when Paul prays that, that we would be fruitful in every good work, what is he saying? That we're going to what? Honor God. That we're going to walk worthy of God. That we're pleasing God. Why? Because we're glorifying him. We're fulfilling his purpose to glorify him upon this earth by bearing much fruit. We are a fruitful people. Amen. We are making disciples who make disciples who make disciples. We are reaching the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are being a witness with the power of the Holy Spirit every place we go. Praise God. That's how you bear fruit. And he goes on to say that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God and increasing in the knowledge of God. Oh, my God, help us. We need to increase in the knowledge of God. Like Paul says, we're to grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. How do you grow in, in the knowledge of God? By getting in the word of God. God has revealed himself in this word. God makes himself known in this word by his Holy Spirit. God the Father reveals the Son to us. Jesus the Son reveals the Father to us. As we study this word, as we get in this word, as we seek him, as we go after him, as we pursue God, he reveals himself to us. He who diligently seeks the Lord will find him. When we seek him with our whole soul and strength, we will find him. God will reveal himself to us. We have to seek him. So Paul prays that we would increase in the knowledge of God. And let me explain something to you. When we talk about the knowledge of God, He's not talking about this head knowledge. He, he's not talking about knowing about God. He's talking about this intimate, personal oneness with God. He, he, he's talking about this concept we see in the Old Testament when it talks about a man knowing his wife. That means having an intimate relationship with her. When God talks about knowing him, he's talking about we know him to this place, that, that, that this place that, that we become intimately one with him, that we come into this place whereby we know him experientially, that we become one flesh, one spirit with him, that this knowledge of God, that we know him to this place, that it radically in, impacts every single area of our life. It radically impacts the way we live, the way we relate to God. It causes us, it motivates us, it moves us, it radically changes us to want to serve him, to please him, to reverence him, to worship him. That's the kind of knowing that we're talking about. We're talking about knowing him to, 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 to such a place that, that it changes everything about our life and makes us the people that God has called us to be. That's why Jesus tells us in John chapter 17, verse 3, he says, this is eternal life. This is the definition of what eternal life is. It says that you may know, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. In other words, Jesus was saying eternal life is knowing God and experiencing reality. To know him in a way that radically changes us. That, that, that alters everything about our life. This is why Paul prayed in, 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 in Philippians. This was, but this was Paul's prayer that I may know you and the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in your suffering, becoming like you in your death. And so somehow I may attain to the resurrection of the dead. Paul says, I count everything dumb. I count everything lost. For what? For the knowledge of God, for knowing God. For knowing God. That was the primary thing. That was the principal thing. So Paul tells us we need to pray for one another. We may pray, we need to pray that we would all increase in the knowledge of God. Knowing Him experientially. Knowing Him, being one with Him. Amen. Amen. And then he goes on that we may be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. 
we, 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 we've been deceived in so many ways. I, I remember many, many, hearing many, many sermons about how, you, you know, we're Christians, we're Christians, you know, just come to Christ, just believe in Christ. God loves you. You're going to have a life of, of, of blessing, a life of rosiness. Everything's going to be good. You're never going to suffer, you, you know, all of these things. That's not the gospel. Jesus himself told us in this life we will have tribulation. Paul tells us if we live a life of godliness, we will have tribulation. We will be persecuted. The, the, the Bible tells us that, that we have an enemy that is out there to kill, steal, and destroy. We have an enemy that seeks to devour us. We have an enemy that is waging war against us. We have a world that is against us. He, Jesus warned us, we'll be hated by everybody around us. We'll be hated by the nation. We'll be hated by our own family, by our own relatives. We'll be persecuted. We'll even be killed. We'll be imprisoned. We'll be tortured. So Paul prays. He makes us part of his prayer that, 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 that we will be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. That we will be strengthened. He, he talks about another in another uh, passage of prayer that, that we will be strengthened in the inner man by his spirit. That's why Jude tells us we're to be praying in the spirit. We're to pray in the Holy Spirit. We're to pray in the Holy Spirit. Why? To edify, to build ourselves up, to strengthen our inner man, to build ourselves up in the faith, to build ourselves up in the spiritual man, to stand. When everything is said, to, said when everything is to stand, to stand against the laws of the devil, to, to, to stand with the armor of God, to stand against him, to, to, to stand with the shield of faith, with the helmet of salvation, with the breastplate of righteousness, with the sword of the spirit. We need to be, we need to be built up. We need to be built up in, in, in the glorious power of God, in, in, the, in the strength of the inner man. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. We're living in days where many are falling away, where many are going into positive, where many are being taken down. We need to be able to stand. Continue to endure to the end. Jesus warned us, only those who endure to the end are going to be saved. We need to stand. And you can't stand apart from the power of the a glorious power of God working in us, helping us, strengthening us, building ourselves up in the faith again, being in the word, being in prayer, praying in the Holy Spirit to edify and build ourselves up in the, in, in the inner man to grow in our faith. How does faith come? How does faith increase? How do we get to faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Again, you have to be in the word. You have to get in the word of God. We have to do the things that God has called us to do. Let's keep going. I want to get through this. Amen. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. For all patience and long suffering for joy. Again, what is he saying? How do we stand? We stand with patience, with long suffering, and with a right attitude. That's the hard part right there. That's the hard part right there. The wrong to have the right attitude, to, to have patient and long suffering, to be able to stand with patient and long suffering with joy. Counted it all joy. Plus, he said he counted it all joy. He counted it all joy. His present sufferings weren't, compare, weren't worth comparing to the glory that we revealed in him. Jesus went to cross for joy, for the for the glory set before him. Do you count it all joy for the things that you go through? Do you count it all joy for the suffering that you go through? Do you count it all joy when you're persecuted, when things don't go right, when the world comes against you? Do you count it all joy? You got to be strengthened with the glorious power of God to do that. You got to be in that place with God, knowing that your feet are on the solid rock which cannot be moved. That we abide in his presence, the place of, of joy, the place of, of pleasures unspeakable, the place of joy unspeakable and full of glory. You can only have that in that intimate oneness, that place in Christ. Amen. A 
Paul is telling us we need to pray this for each other. We need to pray that every single one of us would embrace these things and put them into our life, get them in our lives. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Then look what he says. Giving thanks to the Father. Giving thanks to the Father. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Thanking God for what he's done. Praising God for what he has done to save us to wash us, to sanctify us, to justify us, to make us new creation, to make us the very special people of God, the holy people of God, to make us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, to save us from sin, to save us from this wickedness of this world, to deliver us out of the darkness and bring us in. We need to thank God for what he has done to make us the inheritors, to make us the children of God, to make us the heirs of God, the joint heirs with Christ. That we have an inheritance, an eternal inheritance in heaven of eternal life. We have a future and a hope. We have an inheritance. God has qualified us for heaven through the work of Christ. Do you thank God for that? Do you thank God every day when you get up for life, for breath, for strength, for another day to do something to glorify Him, to praise Him, to give Him glory? Hallelujah. We need to pray this prayer over ourselves, our wives, our, our husbands, our children, our families, our friends, for the, for the church, for the lost, for everybody. We need to pray for one another. Because that's how it comes to pass. Because God stands behind his word to do it. When we ask anything according to his will, he has promised he will do it. He will do it. He will do it. We just got to obey him. We just got to obey him. We just got to do, do what Jesus said to do. We, we just got to do the word, not just hear the word, but do the word. Do the word. This is the confidence. First John 5, 14. This is the confidence we have in him. This is the confidence that we have in him. We have a confidence. We have assurance. When we pray it, God's going to do it. There's a confidence in praying the word of God. If that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition we have asked of him. You can pray this prayer with confidence. Why? Because it is the written will of God. It is the written word of God. And God has promised to do what he has given to us. Will you pray this prayer? Write it down. Write it out. Memorize it. And pray it for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones, for everybody. Will you begin to pray this and do what God says do? Because I'm telling you, we're living in the days where many are going to fall away, where many are going to be deceived, where many are, 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 are going to fall aside, where many are going to miss the mark, where, where, where many are going to be drawn away, many are going to be overcome. Will you pray this? Will you stand with your brothers and sisters in Christ? Will you be obedient to what God has called us to do? Amen. Let's pray. So I'm going to pray this for you right now. I'm praying this for myself. I'm praying this for my family. I'm praying this for the church. I'm praying this for you right now. I'm praying this for you. I pray right now. I pray. And I'm not going to cease to pray. Listen, I, I pray these. I pray these. I pray these over and over and over again. Over and over again, not just this one. I pray every prayer that Paul gives them out. I pray every single one of them for every single person in the body of Christ. I pray them over and over. You can know with assurance that somebody's praying this for you. That's me. Amen. Will you pray it for me? Will you pray it for your family? Will you pray it for, for, for your church? Will you pray it for your loved ones? Will you pray it for those in your church, in your community, in your neighborhood? And on your job and your school, will you pray this and obey God and do what he says? I'm praying this for you right now. I'm not going to cease to pray for you and to ask God that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I pray that you 
may walk worthy of the Lord, that you may be fully pleasing to him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. I pray that you be strengthened with might, with all might, according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in the light. And Father, I know I prayed this prayer for them. I pray, Father, that you would make it a part of their lives. That, Father God, you would put this in their hearts to do it for everybody else. I pray, Father God, every person that hears this message will begin to pray this prayer and encourage others to pray it. Get their wives to pray it. Get their husbands, get their children to pray it. Get their church to pray it for one another until the whole body of Christ is doing what we're called to do. Loving one another, praying for one another. I ask it in Jesus' name. And I pray for you right now. If you're sick, if you're going through oppression, if you're being attacked, I pray life into you right now. I pray the word of God right now, that God will strengthen you on the bed of illness and sustain you on the sick bed. I pray that your sickness might not be unto death, but for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. I pray that, that you would come into the revelation knowledge of, of God as Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord who heals you. I speak life and healing to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You have been redeemed from the curse of the law. I speak life and healing to you. I cast down, I break that stronghold of sickness over you right now in Jesus' name. I bind every spirit of oppression and command them to loose you right now. I cast down every spirit of infirmity, sickness, disease, death, and destruction in the name of Jesus by the blood of the Lamb. I command healing into your body. I release miracles into you right now, body, soul, and spirit. I speak life into every tissue and organ of your body from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet. Be healed in Jesus' Christ. Jesus heals you right now. Let the faith of Christ rise up in you right now. Jesus Christ heals you by his stripes. You are healed. Rise up. Take up your bed and walk in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name. It's the children's bread. It belongs to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you for being with me this morning. Uh, I do these pop-ups every now and then, but also Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. I am on every Sunday with the Word of God. Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, Bible study. Praise God. We're getting into the deep things of God. Listen, you want to hear some word? You want to hear some truth that's going to change your life? Join me every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, and you will be blessed. Amen. Why? Because the Word of God is blessed. Praise God. Amen. Thank you for being with me. This is George Dello, Power for Today Prophetic Ministries. You can get all of these videos on my Facebook page as well as YouTube. Just plug in my name, George Dello, D-E-L-O, and uh, those things will come up. And uh, Power for Today Prophetic Ministries, and you can get, there's hundreds on them are, on there. Every one is the word, the word, the word, the word, because he said, Herald and preach the word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let me encourage you. I pray you have a blessed day in the Lord and uh, keep looking up. Your redemption draws nigh. We are one day closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and he's coming soon. You better get ready. It's time, like I said, grow up. Grow up into your head, Jesus Christ, and be a part of what God's doing. Do your part to build up the church in love. Amen. God bless you. Love you and appreciate you. God loves you. Amen. Go to church tomorrow. Seek the Lord. Get in the word and be blessed in Jesus name. I'll see you next time. Amen.